Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to run through my Padfolio or my small business planner slash notebook. Um, I just recently went to a really cute little uh, small business get together with some ladies here on Kadena that also do, you know, um, arts and crafts, services, things like that. And I got a lot of compliments and a couple questions on this. So I thought that might be a really cute video to do for anybody else who might want to either put a binder together for their small business or just to be inspired to start one in general. Um, so this one is actually from Amazon. It is from, I think it's called Forevermore Portfolios. Yes, Forevermore Portfolios. It was $40. Um, originally, I got like a 20% off on it and I actually still think that they are running that even now. Um, I'll leave a link in the description box below. But uh, the reason I chose this one is not just for the color, but I liked all of the inside pockets, this outside pocket here. You know, if you're a girl, you know, pockets, pockets are everything. Uh, so I wanted it to look really classy. I wanted to make sure that there was a zipper feature so that everything could be held inside. The zipper is really, really buttery smooth and nice, which I can really appreciate. Um, I wanted something that could go in like a nice little tote bag or anything like that without having all of the stuff fall out of it, you know, like a regular three ring binder. Um, but I also wanted to make sure it had a three ring binder and a place for a pad of notes in the back, like a normal pad folio, if that makes sense. So anyway, we're going to walk through this. Obviously there is a pocket out here. Sometimes I like to slip my phone in it or sometimes if I'm taking notes instead of, you know, immediately putting them in the back inside of the binder, I just stick them down in here temporarily. And when you open it up and lay it flat, this is what it looks like. Um, I purposely did not get like pencil holders and stuff over here. There's lots of options on Amazon if you're looking for something like that. I just needed one because I have this really nice Dr. Grip by Pilot. It is a five in one. So it's got your blue, your green, your red, your pencil and your black pen. So everything that I need is in this one pen and I'll show you why I need all these colors and you know, what I do with those here in just a second. But it's got one little pencil holder up here and this nice and big so you can stick one of those larger pens in it. Oh, it also has an eraser at the end. All right, and then over here, we've got a large pocket, which I actually use for my planner. One of the reasons I went down to a small planner is because I wanted to be able to fit it inside of a pad folio instead of doing one of those planners that you add everything else to. This way it's also super, super portable and I could just take this out and stick it in my purse if I want. This is a Moleskine, um, I think they call it a weekly because it's got, the weeks, let's get to an actual, yeah. So a Moleskine Weekly. I'm a little behind on updating my months because I tend to use the actual month spread more than I do the weekly ones. But I like that I can just stick it in here. It zips up, it's safe. Um, inside of this zipper, I like to put flyers and things. I won't show you the information on these flyers because they've got QR codes and stuff, but I like to stick flyers and things in there, especially when they aren't like large enough to put in my three ring binder section. And then we'll come back to this here in just a second because this is my favorite part. Um, but I do also have another pocket here and it just so happens to be holding my high school uh, transcripts because I couldn't remember what my GPA was and I needed it for something, which I can't remember. But anyway, so the very first I would like to have an overview of the year calendar. Now it kind of seems like maybe it might be redundant because in my planner I have lots of versions, you know, weekly, monthly calendars. But I like to use this specifically for my earnings. And what I do is, because this pen has multiple um, colors, I like to write out in a different color for each one what I've made monthly so at the end of the year I can kind of see. Now these aren't perfectly perfect numbers. So kind of take them with a grain of salt because what I do is these are 
you know, without fees, without anything. This is just what I make at each event, like my actual take home. So it's not really about profits or anything like that. It's just, you know, what I take home, not showing all the other stuff that goes into it. But I have events, classes, what I make on my Etsy, because this is purely digital right now, and then anything that I do in private. And I circle the dates that it happens, and I record how much at the end of the month the total is. Um, now, when I break these down, they go in my actual planner, and then I can add them up later, because I just want to see how busy I was, if that makes sense. So I have a 2023, and then I'm prepping for 24 because that's coming up soon. I also have these dividers with the pockets. I like the extra space, you know, pockets. Um, I don't have tabs on them because when you close it, it would kind of come out the side and I didn't like that messing with my zipper or messing with the divider, but it works because I can find them really easily. You know, they're good enough colors that it's not difficult. Um, I also have a page, sometimes two, um, here at Kadena, I don't need quite so many, but um, like when we were at our last base uh, and I had a regular three ring binder, I really just wanted to have a space to put just business cards. Uh, sometimes flyers, you know, they're a little too big and I've even folded those down before, but um, it's nice to have just a business section. Um, this is mo mostly for local things like uh, people to contact for events and stuff like that. I don't have any manufacturing stuff in here right now since I'm not doing that. Um, then I have all of my important documents for being able to run this business on base. Um, like this is kind of, this isn't something they give you at the beginning. I actually just found this online and decided to print it out, but I needed to know the rules and how I was supposed to conduct my business here on base. Next page, um, oh, and I did cover some things for like sensitive information, but this is the contract that I have that I'm allowed to use or sell on base. Um, and then I have other contracts with other like specific places like our community center and stuff like that. And then I have my actual full-sized business plan. It is, I think like 30 some pages. I do want to have a single page one at some point. I just haven't narrowed things down enough to know what I want to put on that single page, especially since I haven't been 100% sure how to market my private classes and things like that just yet. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty intense. Um, I've got a bunch of blank air. Anything that's highlighted isn't actually done, so I don't know what my numbers are and stuff since I've kind of just started scratching the surface of all of that. And then after that, I start doing my craft show stuff and hang on, <laughs> the cat thing is going off. All right, so this page is for my craft show stuff or this section rather, um, I've got a few extras printed. This is just like a really easy way to recap, especially for maybe the following year when I want to see how that event went for me the year before. This is really good for looking back on. Um, I just started this this year, so I don't have much to go off of from last year, which is unfortunate because I was very busy, especially in the fall of last year. So this is available on my Etsy shop and I will zoom in really quick so you can kind of see some extra close ups, but it's got like the event name, if I've got a sponsor, uh, the date and time that it's set up and all that kind of thing, stuff like uh, how much I made that gets recorded here. And then again, at the beginning on my calendar and uh, like this one is empty. It's ready for my next event, which is coming up on Saturday. And then I have extras for when that is needed. But yeah, like I said, you can get those on my Etsy shop there. It's like a dollar download if you are looking for something that is really uh, small and not just a whole page for one event because that's what I kept finding. I've got some extra sleeves back here because you never know. I like to sometimes print my events like uh, maps or uh, maybe like their code of conduct kind of stuff, things what, that they send us through email. Um, sometimes I put those in here during the events. All right, and then this section is for my um, t 
teaching stuff. So this is the contract I have with Arts and Crafts. And then it's signed. And then um, I also like to include all of my rosters for those classes. There's quite a few of them. Again, covered up for sensitive information. But um, that way I can keep track of how many people because that determines what my price point is when I get paid at the end of the month. And then for the last one, um, well, I guess it's next to last technically, but uh, I am creating my own diploma, my own coursework. Just It's really just a list of all the things that I would like to participate in. Classes online, books I want to read, things that will further me personally and in my career for myself. It's not really for anything other than me, but um, that's the curriculum for that. And then I've actually decided that I want to do a capstone project for myself also. And I actually found this one online that I really liked the way it was laid out and the information given about doing the project. Again, only for myself, but I thought it would be fun. All right, and then I've got a couple of like flyers for, um, it's not really for manufacturers. It's a local business that can help with that. So that's that. Uh, this kind of useless sh social media thing, it is so generalized, it's hard to really apply it to my specific business, but every now and then I reread areas that kind of are helpful. And then again, here in the back is the pad folio. This is the one that came with it but I will be upgrading to, you know, like the the double lined ones because it's kind of crazy that this one is blank on the back a little bit. And then I've got a pocket underneath this one and I do have some stuff in here, um, old notes. And then it's got another pocket for the actual pad itself to go in up top up here so that you get an actual pocket that's separated. All right, so that's really the gist of it. However, when I bought this, I knew I wasn't going to put credit cards or IDs or anything like that because you know this isn't really a corporate situation where I would be carrying this everywhere in place of my wallet. And really, that confuses me. I don't know who carries around a whole pad folio with all their credit cards in it, but to each their own. So I knew from the beginning, I wanted to put this full of like really inf useful information for myself. Um, I went ahead and put my name on it down here, the rusty thicket on the back side. If you take this out, it has my actual name and my contact information just in case it gets lost. Again, they could flip through it and find that too, but just in case something easy. This next pocket, this side pocket, I have uh, for my small business uh, contact information. This is my link tree. And then I have actual business cards that I can hand out. This is for, you know, if I wanted to show somebody and they can snap it really quick. And then this is obviously if they want to take one. I like having both options because, you know, I don't need to reprint a million and one business cards if I don't have to. Um, and then we'll start from the top up here. This is just like a little quote card to kind of keep me thinking, I guess. Um, you know, just little quotes to live by. Visions are worth fighting for. Why spend your life making someone else's dreams? And Tim Burton is like one of my absolute favorite people of all time. I think he's just brilliant and he's got some great quotes, especially about art and really just being yourself, which I, I love, especially since my things are so quirky anyway. And then I have some long-term goals and short-term goals. These are both mentioned in my small business um, plan, but I want to be able to mark them off and actually I haven't yet, um, but open an online shop, which I'll do when we get back stateside. Hopefully one day get to have a Patreon, which um, I feel like should only come after I am monetized on YouTube, which by the way, we're at 400 and I'm just so excited. Don't forget to make sure that you like and comment and subscribe to the channel because we're almost at 500, which means I can do my next giveaway. And I'm really excited about that because I've put a lot of thought into it this time. 
Um, and then of course I want this to be a full-time income. Obviously right now my husband is footing most of our bills, which is absolutely acceptable to do here in Japan. Um, our cost of living is a lot lower, but when we get back to the States, I want to be, you know, back into things. Thankfully, I am completely self-sustaining and I don't dip into our own actual money or anything like that. So the business is going great. It's just not what I would consider a full-time income. Um, and then I want to eventually be able to travel to big events, like really large fairs and things out of state and stuff like that when we get back. And then my short term goals are to obviously monetize YouTube, which we're, we're getting there. It's going pretty well. Um, I want to design that online shop before I actually put it together. And that's going to happen in like the next two years or so. Um, I am already doing this art teaching and tutoring, so I can mark that off. Yay. And then I wish I had a bit more of a passive income and I am working on some more digital and online things for that. So short term to me is the next two years and long term is basically anything after that. All right, and then this card is gonna take a little bit of explaining, but the creative naturalist is the diploma I am creating for myself. It's gonna have nature journaling, art, mixed media, different books to read, um, some of it very sciencey, some of it very just art related to nature, things like that. And um, I just think that it resembles everything that I want, creating and being artistic, but pairing that very happily with nature. So I just kind of put that in there. If, if I ever name drop it and I want to have somebody to have like a like a legitimate definition. <laughs> All right, and then my social media uh, cheat sheet, which just tells me how many times I should be uploading and what I should be doing on each different version of social media because I don't feel like I'm great at it. And um, I don't follow this exactly, but the plan is to be getting there. So it's just a reminder. But anyway, I know this is like super short and a little bit random, but I really just wanted to show you guys how I stay organized and how I make this binder work for me because I, when I first got it and I wasn't hundred percent sure how to put it together, it's taken a few months of living in it before it really started to make sense for me. And I just want to show you that it's super doable. All you really need are a couple of dividers and um, a three ring hole punch is super handy. And then these are all printed on just photo paper. And I would like to laminate them eventually, but right now they're holding up pretty well. And that is it. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video. Let me know in the comment section below if you would add anything or if you have one that is working better for you. I'm always interested in options. Um, but yeah, make sure you guys like and comment and subscribe and I will see you next week for the August studio vlog. Um, so yeah, until then, bye guys.